you and I will, in a process as we serve the Lord, be changed into His image. A little more, the Bible says, from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord. Thank God, God is the God, He is the change agent in you. Have you ever had people say, I'm with you all the way. It doesn't make any difference. Come on, let's go, let's go. Let's go, we can do it, we can do it. And then the moment the devil goes, boo, some way or another, you're like, where are you? <laughs> Just a thought. Verse 37. And then there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And Jesus, he was in the hinder part of the ship, and he was asleep on a pillow. Oh my goodness. And then they woke him up, and they said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Jesus just got up and rebuked the wind, and he said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Look at verse 37. In case you forget everything else pastor says tonight, remember this in verse 37. You notice what it says? There arose, the Bible says, a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship. Everybody say, great storm. Great storm. And then look at verse 39. Everybody say, great calm. Great calm. Isn't that interesting? Every time the enemy tries to give a great storm against your life, just remember God is going to manifest an answer with great peace, great calm. Something from God is going to happen that is amazing. If you just stick with the Word, uh, for the sake of a talking point that I believe God will drill into your inner man, just listen to this. Anytime you get in the boat and you're afraid your boat's going down, wake up the Word. Jesus is called the Word made flesh who dwelt among us. You and I have this right here, the Word of God. Come on, shout it with me. Wake up the Word. Amen. Now look, don't in enhance and increase your ability to panic and freak out. Some people just have the, the natural gift to freak. I mean, they can just freak out over the weather. The temperature can drop and they're like, oh my God, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go outside, it's cold, you know, and, they, uh, and they're all upset. And they're just, just railing how bad the wind is and, and the weather and the temperature. And then they get in their car and they're upset. And they slam the door and the wind is cold and it breaks the window. And then things just get worse. Who knows what I'm talking about? Don't, don't look at someone. Just kind of look straight ahead. <laughs> the scripture says right here, Jesus was in the midst of a great storm. And when he spoke to it correctly, the Bible says it became a great calm. So I don't know what the enemy is trying to do right now in your life and what circumstances have tried to bring upon you that are causing the spirit of, of storm to try to show up. But just remember, God has a great answer for every great problem that's coming your way. Come on, that's a great place right there to just take a moment and praise God. I mean, just let that get in your spirit today. So let me teach just for a moment. If I had a title for this today, I think I would call it Overcoming the Invisible and Unexpected Foe. How to overcome the invisible, unexpected foe. Do you notice what happened right here with Jesus? And I think, this, I think it's worth understanding this because you see it more than once. Jesus, the Bible says, got in the boat and there arose. There arose. And that word arose is a word you'll see numerous times in the Scripture. It's the word genomai in the Greek. And I didn't give them the words to put up on there tonight. I just want you to get it. And the word, uh, it says, and it arose, there arose a great storm. And it just means something that takes one, uh, someone off guard or completely by surprise. It means to happen suddenly, and then it comes into being. Something that's real unexpected. There arose. They get in the boat. The other little boats are with them. They're just going out over the sea. Everybody's having a hallelujah time. They're talking about how Jesus is multiplying the bread and the fish and thousands are being fed with a few loaves and fishes. 
And then all of a sudden, it caught him by, Jesus is like, I'm going to go down and take a nap. I've been working a lot. I'm just going to get down and go to sleep. And all of a sudden, it caught him totally by surprise. Peter being a, a, a fisherman, he was actually a commercial fisherman uh, when Jesus called him. And it caught him totally by surprise. And suddenly, here comes a great storm, the Bible says. A great wind. Now listen, the one thing you can't see is wind. Wind is not seen. And Jesus used this example for you and I to understand the natural and the spirit realm. There are a lot of things that have a natural manifestation, but they have a, uh, a source that uh, causes it to take place, but you can't see it. For instance, radar. We have an FM radio station here right now, 24 hours a day. We're beaming out all over Galveston County. And then the internet online is streaming those things right off of this tower out here, this 200 foot tower that the church owns. And those radio waves are going all through you. They're just everywhere near. You can't see them, but they have an effect. And the unseen, someone learned how to harness that. And so they harnessed uh, in theory. They did it with theory. And that theory gave them an understanding of reality. And when they did it, they understood uh, more how to harness it. And the further we go along, the more they learn to harness the unseen just in the natural, that natural unseen realm. It's amazing how it comes into manifestation. I'm still stunned how you got a little cell phone in your hand. And sometimes you push the button, bam, and hits a satellite up there, goes over there, bam, 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 comes in on the other side of the world. And it may take almost a second for that to happen. Now just tell me how that happens. There is a dimension, there's an unseen realm that's not limited in any way by time and distance and all of those kind of things. But that being said, there is a spiritual realm that Jesus talks about. Paul writes about it. Once again, Old and New Testament, you see it all the way through there. Jesus uses this illustration. The Bible says, suddenly there arose a great wind a great storm, and it begins to cause the sea to churn real bad, and the waves are hitting that boat, and the Bible says they filled up the boat. Well, I can see Peter and, and the rest of them, and they're trying to bail out the boat. And it's like, bail it out. I don't know where this thing came from. It's horrible. And the scripture says, finally, the boat was full of water and they thought they were going to sink. Now, I'm not sure how Jesus was asleep on a pillow somewhere and not underwater, but the Bible says that Jesus had gone to the back part of the boat, implying that it may, or might have even had some kind of a little cabin of some kind in it. And Jesus was asleep on a pillow. How many of you are glad that our Heavenly Father uh, and His Son and His Spirit do not have the gift of panic? The Bible says that they go to Jesus and they say, Jesus, Master, don't you care that we perish? Has anyone ever been? Don't lift your hand on this one. <laughs> Have you ever been in a difficult to desperate situation and the answer hadn't broken through yet and you almost get mad at God because it hadn't happened? Oh my goodness, this is confession night, isn't it, huh? And all of a sudden you're wondering, why doesn't it happen? Why did God let Jesus win the boat? Why do bad things happen to good people? Why is there poverty in the world? Why can't I seem to recover from a loss? Pastor Walter Hallam tackles these and many more tough questions in his book, The Big Why. You'll learn how to view your memories as treasures and to cherish each one as they fuel you on to live a life full of faith and confidence. I want to recommend The Big Why to you. The Big Why is a powerful book loaded with understanding on why bad things happen to good people and why we experience things that are difficult sometimes and we just don't have an answer why. Well, in this particular book, I give four reasons that's easy to understand from the scriptures and how to overcome that attack, how to overcome that problem. It's called The Big Why. Go to WalterHallamMinistries.com, go to the store there, find this book, uh, get it for yourself, and maybe share it with a friend too. Like we were back on the shore just an hour and a half ago, and we're, we're healing, and we're casting out, and we're multiplying bread and fish, and we're teaching, and everybody's like, woohoo, the revival's on, we're going to take over the world. 
and we got faith and our other ships are jumping in there with them. And then all of a sudden the storm rises up and the other ships are nowhere to be seen. And Jesus said, why didn't your faith last any longer than this? Sometimes we get in a praise service. I'm not putting you down. I'm just talking the way that this is what Jesus said. Sometimes we'll get in the, in the house of God and we're like, whoo, the word's in me powerful. I got it. That devil's going to have to F-L-E-E -E in Jesus' name. He got to G-O. Who knows what I'm talking about? It's all over you. I mean, you're like, whoo, it's going to happen. And then you turn on the TV and you see there's a virus. Oh my God, I'm going to take my vacation. I'm not saying don't use wisdom, of course, in anything you do, but you can't let that spirit of fear get on you. Now, the same faith that's building when you're hearing the Word taught and God is talking to you in your, in your heart, you got to keep that stirred up in your life when you walk out of here, especially when you walk out of here. It's not ever hard to have faith when you're in a house of faith. The high praises of God, the gifts of the Spirit. Something can happen at any moment. Miracles can break out on the row around you there. Answers will begin to manifest in people's lives and they'll know they have it. But the moment you walk out, the enemy's going to try your faith. James 1 says, the trying of our faith worketh endurance. It worketh patience. Romans says that. The trying of our faith worketh patience. So the enemy's really not after you. He's after your faith. Because your faith is where God and you are connected from the heart. You believe in your heart, you say it with your mouth. You believe in your heart, the word and the ways of the kingdom of God. And so Jesus says, uh, the scripture says, Jesus asked them, why didn't your faith last any longer than that? They're like, why couldn't we do it? He said, why didn't your faith last any longer? You can't allow your circumstance to change your revelation of who you are in Christ and who He is in you. Amen. And what He can and will do through your life. Come on, you ought to clap your hands right there. I mean, it ought to just get in your spirit. A great time right there to praise God. Come on, just seal it with your praise when you do that. And so the scripture goes on and says, they said, do you care? Don't you care that we're, we're about to come apart? We're going to perish? This thing's going to sink to the bottom of the sea? And the Bible says, Jesus just arose at their request. When they called on him, he got up. Now, he's going to come with answers. He's going to come with power, but you let him have the right to talk to you uh, as he meets that need. Just allow him to have the right to talk to you and to speak into your life. Like, Peter, don't have such short-term faith. Don't let the circumstance be what determines if you are believing or not believing. You're living in a fallen realm. But you have authority, you have power, you have light in darkness. And God will bless you. Goodness and mercy will overcome you. He is a good God. Come on, guys. And even right here, God will bless you. You'll be the head and not the tail. All of those things. But it doesn't happen without challenge. You have an opponent. Whether you're a believer or not. Because hell is after your faith. And listen, if you forget everything else I say, remember this. Hell is after the God potential that's on the inside of you. That gets activated when you believe in Jesus. So whether a person is a believer or not, the enemy tries to take them out. As much as he would you, because the potential to have dominion and authority over all of the work of darkness. Uh, that's in every person. The bars are full of people that have this, authority, uh, this potential in them if they ever get a revelation of Jesus. They're going to rise up and be totally different. That's why if somebody says, yeah, I was in prison, I was in all of that, Pastor, or I've been in trouble, or I've done this, or I've done that, and I'm thinking, well, hallelujah, you finally came to yourself, got out of the pig pen, and now it's time to become everything God called you to, uh, to do, everything God wants you to be. Uh, listen, who cares about your past? We care about what God's going to do right now and how He's going to use you in the future. That's what's important. I don't know about you, but I remember what He brought me from. 
We, we never forget how God delivered us. Shout amen. amen. So he rebuked, the Bible says, the seen realm. Jesus rebuked the wind, it says. Everybody shout rebuke. rebuke. Now this is interesting, and, I, and my time's up just about, so listen to this right here. It says he rebuked it, but that's not the, the, the Greek word, the word that Jesus would have spoken. That is not the word uh, right there, rebuke. The English word rebuke, that's not it. That's what the translators use that particular word. And, and I guess it's sufficient for the time being, but as you study, you find out what that word means. The word rebuke is the word E-P-I-T-I-M-A-O, ep, uh, epitomeo, like epitomato juice or so, epitomeo. An interesting word, uh, two words put together, but for the sake of that, understand what it means. It just means to humiliate. It means to humiliate with words. It just literally means to humiliate. It means to chide. Uh, it means to verbally assault with words. It means to censure something. You see, the devil was full of pride. And he is full of false pride. And that's why he was cast down. That's where the, that root got in him that caused him to be cast down. Does everybody know what I'm saying? Wave your hand if you know what I'm saying. That's in the Bible. False pride did that. That's why he rose up against Jesus uh, and God in heaven. And was cast down because pride was in him. Therefore, he activated something in him called iniquity. And that's why uh, the Word says that pride comes before a fall. Because that's what happened in the beginning. Uh, when, when Lucifer was cast down. Uh, but anyway, it says right here, when Jesus was talking to that wind, which was the unseen source of the seen problem, he said he just spoke to that in such a way as he assaulted that spiritual realm. I believe there was a demon trying to sink the boat. Because he's about to uh, glide right into a graveyard at Gadara. And there's a man with 6,000 demons there, which is a military term. And, and that demon in him was named Legion. That's in the Bible. If you read chapter 5, it would be there. And that thing was up in the mountains up there and could see out over the sea. And all of a sudden, one night, on a clear night, here comes, the Scripture says, Jesus and the posse, they're coming across there on a nice night. They're just floating across there. And all of a sudden, bam, just like that. A storm came that was trying to sink that boat. And the, the, the disciples just did not know and understand yet how they were supposed to operate. So God uh, saved that for you and me to get some understanding there. And uh, Jesus rebuked him. Now when Jesus goes, and later on in chapter 5, when he rebukes the demon and tells that thing to go into the pigs, it's the same word. When he casts that, uh, that uh, legion out of that man, it's the same word as when he spoke to that uh, wind. He rebuked it, and it's like Jesus was saying, I don't know exactly how he would have said it because the Bible doesn't say it. The word we get right here, the King James English word that we get, of course, is the word rebuke. But Jesus just shamed the devil. He just took authority, took dominion over him. It's like, who do you think you are harassing my kids? And he rebuked him and he assaulted him with his words. And he, he humiliated him. And that was the worst thing that could happen to the devil in that particular dispensation. In that, at that particular time, uh, Jesus just took authority over him totally, which would have been a great humiliation because the devil thought he had all, uh, that spirit thought it had dominion over everything. Are you listening to me? So when you rebuke something, you can use the word rebuke in the name of Jesus if you got some faith working in your heart. But what he's saying literally is, you have no dominion over me. You have no authority over me. Jesus has already defeated you. Come on, listen to me. I'm talking about you. The blood of Jesus is against you. The name of Jesus is over you. You have no dominion, no might in my life. Go in Jesus' name. It's something like that. And this was before Jesus had crucified and rose from the dead. But he, he captured it for you and me to understand it. Because we're, we're post-resurrection today. 
And he's already, his name has been glorified, the Bible says. And he's given it unto the, the church, the believers. And when you have a revelation of that name, oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. If I only said to you, well, you need to rebuke the devil. Uh, I'll tell you a story one time. You want to hear this story? There was, there was a very good friend. And they were having a conference. And there were a lot of uh, motorcycle people that are Christians that were in this particular conference. And some of these uh, folks are, are pretty, pretty unique. But they love the Lord. And they were there. And so the wife was up there. Um, and she was kind of hosting and talking, giving testimony and praise reports at the conference. And, and so there was a little lineup of these ladies that are around there. And she's saying, God's been good to us. He set you free. What did he set you free from? And this one said, well, I was in drugs. I was in prostitution. I was in all that. The ladies were telling about that. And then he, he says something to the other one. The other one says, well, I was in stuff and I'm not just uh, completely free, but I'm about to get free. I really feel like I'm so better. I'm yada, yada, yada. And she says to that person, well, you just need to curse the devil in Jesus' name. And the lady said, what? She said, yeah, just take your authority. Just curse the devil in Jesus' name. She said, okay. You blankety bank, blankety bank devil. She just goes off on him. And she went, whoa, whoa, no, that's not exactly what I meant. That's not, that's, that's not what I mean. And sometimes we use words. And we don't even think about what our words mean. But when you rebuke your adversary in Jesus' name, I'm talking about in that unseen realm, and you're saying to that sickness, get off of my body. And you're saying to that poverty, get out of my family and out of my lineage. And you begin to speak the word of God. Go ahead and define what you're saying. Go ahead and say, in the name of Jesus, every demonic force that's trying to hinder, I tell you, you're rebuked, you have no authority. You have no dominion. The name of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. I'll sick the angels of God on you in the name of Jesus. And when you speak that name on lips of faith, you activate that spiritual realm. What you bind, what you allow on earth is connected to that spiritual realm. But what you refuse and deny is also denied in the spirit realm. There's two realms. You all okay? Did we learn something tonight? And so the Bible says, Jesus did that, and suddenly there was a great calm. There was a great calm. Great storm? The, the word great is a, I like this word, the word great is the word mega, M-E-G-A. In Greek, the original word mega. There was a mega storm. Suddenly, pfft, Caught them by surprise. About to shake them to pieces. And then Jesus, come on, shout his name again. Jesus. Jesus stands up and says, I rebuke the wind. But we understand what it means. When he said it, and when he rebuked it, there was a mega calm. Well, I hope you enjoyed the broadcast today and the message of faith. You know, the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. So I believe if you and I can learn the scriptures together, teach and deliver the word of God and do it, it will create faith because faith comes by hearing the word of God. In doing so, I believe you and I are doing our part to help take the gospel of Jesus to the world. It's called the Great Commission. Can I encourage you today to pray about becoming a partner of Walter Hallam Ministries? Uh, on the screen, you can see how you can get involved with us on a daily basis, on a monthly basis, a weekly basis. How you can be uh, a, a supporter and the helper to take the good news of Jesus to the world. Listen, I understand there are many people who probably come to you and say, would you help us? Would you partner with us some way? And if they're taking the, the name of Jesus with faith to the world, I bless that person. I'd like to ask you humbly, if you would consider Walter Hallam Ministries. This is our 35th year to be able to telecast and bring the gospel of Jesus to the world on more than one network. And I'm not sure which one you're watching on today, but I'm thrilled you're with me today. 
Would you consider being a monthly supporter, a partner of Walter Hallam Ministries? $20 a month, $50 a month, or any number that you feel like God has given you. Or maybe you just want to do a one-time gift. I believe that together, together, no one does it by themselves. Together, uh, we can take the good news of Jesus Christ, the salvation message, the power of the Holy Spirit message, the victory message, uh, the message of God's love, His compassion, His grace, His power, and His revelation knowledge. We can take that to the world. When you support Walter Hallam Ministries, we also are involved in a couple of orphanages that we love to bless and help. We have missionaries that are out in the world, some of them in very difficult areas, very difficult areas for pioneering the gospel of Jesus Christ. But for years, we've helped send people to the world, and we still do that today. We've been in several of the major catastrophic events, uh, hurricanes, things of that nature, and we have given away free of charge, millions and millions of pounds of food and clothing and just loving and helping people. When you support Walter Howell Ministries, you're helping make that come to pass. Once again, uh, I know that there are people that are going to ask you the same thing, but I'm asking you humbly today, would you consider supporting Walter Hallam Ministries and becoming a partner. You can go to the website at WalterHallamMinistries.com and there you can see easily how to join, how to connect with us. And then as long as I have your information, like your name, your address, I'll let you know when I'm in your area. I'll come to you every week on television, online, and in all the uh, formats and platforms we can. And if we're in your region, I'll let you know about it and I'd love to meet you personally. Uh, we go to many nations of the world, not just to the United States. This is just where we originate the message from. But we take the gospel of Jesus to the world. I'm standing in our recording broadcasting studios right now. Uh, there are editing suites. There are sound suites. There are other things that are necessary in bringing that 30-minute broadcast to you. When you help, when you do your part, I believe God is pleased with us when we do our part together to take the gospel to the world. So thank you today for going to Walter Hallam Ministries, becoming a partner. And guys, let's do our part in this generation. They say our generation is not supposed to be on fire for God, but they're wrong. I believe we are. And instead of just one person trying to do it or two people trying to do it, let's do it together. Let's be the body of Christ and let's touch this world for Jesus Christ. I love you today. I bless you. Thank you for letting me talk with you. I can't wait to see you and meet you hopefully in person one day. Before I leave right now, can I just pray the blessing of the Lord over you? Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for men and women who love the message of faith. They love the message of grace. They love the message of salvation that comes through Jesus Christ. Today, Lord, let the blessing of the Lord be upon everything that we put our hand to and activate for the kingdom of God. Bless my friend today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you. Can't wait to meet you. Thanks for being with me at Walter Hallam Ministry.